U.S. officials predict a significant Iranian attack on American or Israeli assets in the Middle East as soon as this week. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says America is ready to defend its assets. Iran is angry about Israel's strike on its consulate in Syria last week. The Biden administration says if Israel attacks, Iran attacks Israel rather directly, it almost guarantees a regional conflict. Joining us now, Congressman Darren LaHood, Republican Peoria. He's on the Ways and Means Committee, the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party, and the House's Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Good to be with you. Let's start this morning with that warning. Uh, Newsweek uh, just penned U.S. troops face constant threat. While the U.S. You know, has remained firm on saying our military was not involved in the airstrike on Iran's embassy in Syria. Uh, officials still think American assets are under significant threat. Uh, this is Gaza is ongoing, seemingly a growing issue for America. Well, what can you tell us about this? Well, first of all, I will tell you this. Uh, as it relates to Iran, they're, they're a state sponsor of terrorism. They cannot be trusted. If you look at their malign activities throughout the Middle East, remember, uh, just a little over two months ago, we had three U.S. soldiers on the Jordanian-Syrian border that were murdered by Iranian proxies. So their uh, proxies in Iraq, their proxies in Syria, their support for Hezbollah in Beirut and southern Lebanon, and of course, their blatant support for Hamas and the Houthis, um, you know, uh, is, is rampant. And so uh, we, we need to be, uh, you know, vigilant in terms of doing everything we can to stop uh, the authoritarian regime that is Iran and the terrorist actors that remain in Iran. Uh, and, and they're the genesis for much of this, um, you know, uh, of, of much of the problems in the Middle East. Uh, and, and listen, I have a lot of faith in our intelligence services and our military throughout the region, but they cannot be trusted. Uh, and what I worry about is the Biden administration continues to try to negotiate with them, uh, mm -hmm. at, you know, try to work they, they worked on the nuclear pact with them um I, I don't think that's the right approach they have not shown any um ability uh, to play by the same set of rules and standards that everybody else in the world does okay duly noted to china secretary of uh Secretary of the Treasury, I believe, uh, Jennifer Yellen, is in China right now. Uh, this as China continues to build its navy, which uh, has been and seen as a threat to just about everyone. Now there seems to be growing support for, you know, potentially U.S. TikTok ban, Chinese-owned TikTok, this over security concerns, government-owned, basically. And, you know, Chinese, China's talked about a lot. Um, but they do, they, they don't seem to be overt, like Russia invading other countries, a leader killing his rivals openly. Which country concerns you more right now, short term and long term, China or Russia? Well, it's definitely China. I okay. serve on our select committee on China, which is a bipartisan committee that was set up specifically to uh, do two things. One, expose the malign activities of the CCP, the Communist Chinese Party. But secondarily, figure out how do you win the strategic competition against China? Um, and I think you do that on the economic front. But make no mistake about it. China has a plan to replace the United States. They want to replace us technologically, militarily, economically, and diplomatically. And they're working at it every single day. Now, they may not be overt, as you mentioned, um, but they're doing it in many different ways. They're doing it uh, related to their espionage, related to their stealing of intellectual property. Uh, they're, they're doing it on things like uh, producing the precursors of fentanyl that go to Mexico and then come to the United States. Right. Um, so, so these are all things that we have been focused on and need to continue to be focused on and, and again, I don't think the CCP, the Communist Chinese Party, can be trusted. Um, the problem, of course, is we have a strong economic relationship with them. We have the two largest economies in the world. We are intertwined at every level. So different than winning the Cold War against Russia, where we didn't have an economic relationship, we do with China. And that's uh, the, the, the dilemma that we are in in many ways, is how do you find that balance holding them accountable? The last thing that I will say is, China plays by a different set of rules and standards than every other industrialized country in the world. Mm -hmm. They cheat, they lie, they've been deceitful uh, in many different ways. That's not just the U.S. saying that, that's how their allies in the region and in Europe saying that. Again, duly noted. I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about ways and means. You control the money. You're on that committee. We'll get into that in another conversation. But you did host a, a field hearing in Chicago yesterday. Tell me a little bit about that. 
Yeah, uh, I'm the chair of our Welfare and Work Subcommittee uh, on the Ways and Means Committee. So we brought 10 members of Congress to Chicago on the um, on, on the South Loop area. We were first time a congressional hearing's ever been held at a homeless facility, and we were a homeless shelter. We were at Pacific Garden Mission there, tremendous organization. What we talked about, we had six witnesses there. But we talked about how do we move people off welfare into work. Mm -hmm. We have seven million unfilled jobs in the country today. Um, and what I always say is the best social program is a J-O-B, a job. So we had a hearing that talked exactly about that. How do we move people? And so what are the federal um, public policy issues that we should be focused on? We talked a lot about what's called the TANF cliff. That's kind of the welfare program that uh, almost incentivizes people to stay on welfare. We also talked about how do we incentivize getting people into workforce training programs getting them into apprenticeship. Uh, Pacific Mission Garden does a lot of that. Uh, and so we, we learned about that yesterday. So it was really a worthwhile hearing, again, bipartisan. Uh, and it's a win-win if we can get people off welfare because it saves money for the taxpayer, but it also gets people in a good paying job. And right now we need nurses, we need mechanics, we need machinists, yeah. we need truck drivers, we need welders throughout uh, the country. So anyway, it was a great way to highlight that yesterday. Yeah, well, we have, as you said, hundreds of thousands of jobs opening now. Way to bring the committee right here to Illinois. Uh, next time you do it, we'll be there. We'll try to be there. And Congressman LaHood, we appreciate you joining us. Republican Peoria, thank you for your time. We have many more questions. We have to move on today, but we will see you again soon. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you, sir.